how great is my little portable range setup? This thing is absolutely genius. If you guys are interested in putting together a little portable range like this, you wanna check out shootingtarget7.com. It's definitely the best price on AR500 steel gongs on the internet. And they have these genius little hooks that clamp onto T-posts and it all just collapses down to small enough that I can fit it in my truck toolbox. It's awesome. Can't say enough good things about these targets. All right, these are gonna be the first shots through the Ruger PC charger. Got it rigged up with my SB1913 folding arm brace. And this is a Glock Happy Stick, 33 round mag, Glock brand. And I went ahead and just put the Glock magwell in because I don't really have any Ruger American magazines. So we're just going straight for the Glock ones. And uh, these are gonna be the first shots. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, so it didn't lock in. There we go. Okay, so far it's working. I'm gonna make some adjustments to my sight. Still seems to be a little low. Okay, definitely shooting low still. Shooting. Oh, that was the last one in that round. So, no malfunctions with the Glock mag. That was a uh, Winchester white box, Walmart ammo. And I figured I'd start with the Glock OEM magazine because I figure this thing's made to take lock magazines. We need to start with the OEM. So I've got some aftermarket ones to check as well as some other ammo. Hopefully within this next mag, I'll be on target and we could do a little more exciting shots. All right, this is a KCI Korean made Glock magazine copy. And the guys at J&G sales say that these things are really close to a factory Glock magazine. Factory Glock magazine will run you about 40 bucks. This one will run you closer to like 15 bucks. So. I'm all about if we can get something to function that costs less than half the price, you know, that's what my channel is all about. So a cool thing about this PC charger is that they've made it so you can set it up ambidextrously, okay? So this charging handle can actually be moved to the other side right there. And same with the mag release. Now, even though I shoot left-handed, I actually make it a point to learn how to operate firearms as they come from the factory, even if they're optimized for right-handed people. Also it comes from the factory with this UTG hand stop to prevent your hand from going in front of the muzzle, which I super appreciate, which is fitting really, because I'm using a UTG quick release mount for my Vortex optic right there. And I just have this thing actually turned around backwards because I actually found that it's more comfortable if I can hook my front finger around that and pull back, but it'll still prevent my hand from sliding forward in front of the muzzle under recoil. Um, and then with this grip, I've actually found that I can actually hit that mag release just fine. So while this thing is supposed to be optimized for right-handed people from the factory, I think it's actually optimized for lefties. So I'm pretty happy about that. All right, so this thing is loaded up with some Remington 9 millimeter, 115 grain brass case ammo. And we'll see if this functions just as good. All right. Well, that obviously functioned just fine. And like I said, without moving my hand, I drop that mag free. If I had another one, I'd be ready to go. All right, I've got two ETS magazines. I love these because they're clear, so you can see the ammo that you have in them. I have a 30 round and a 20 round. 30 round is loaded with S&B, uh, 124 grain, brass case ammo. And then this 20 round is actually loaded half with Remington and half with Winchester. And the reason why I did that is because ETS magazines are not known to be the most reliable magazines, even in Glocks. And this is obviously not a Glock, so if there's any magazine that's not gonna be reliable, it's probably gonna be this one. So I wanted to try it with different ammo, just to see if there is an ammo that this magazine likes, um, or if the gun likes it at all with any ammo. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with the 30 rounder, with the SNB, 124 grain. Well, that was 30 rounds, no problem. Throw in another one. All right, first 10 rounds are going to be Remington, second 10 rounds are Winchester.
flawless function. All right, that's all the cheapest ammo that I have. I love that this thing has been 100% reliable. You know, between those four mags, we've shot, you know, well over 100 rounds, 110 rounds. I didn't take this gun apart and clean it at all. Um, I did wipe away some of the excess oil and then I added a couple of drops of oil, but I did that without taking it apart. So far, man, I'm impressed. Now the optic that I have on here is the Vortex Crossfire one to four. I can't imagine a better optic for this gun. I mean, I imagine most people are gonna be using this for CQB style uh, training, as well as, you know, tactical plinking and home defense. So you definitely want something that has the option to do zero magnification. But uh, a lot of people have been putting red dot sights on this. And the reason why I didn't is because there's just not a lot of rail here to put up backup iron sights on, okay? By the time you stick on your red dot and then you might have room for some sights in the front and back, but even still, that's a pretty narrow sight picture considering the barrel extends all the way out to here. So I don't know why Ruger did not put a rail on top here. That kind of drives me bonkers a little bit. I think that's the one improvement that I would make is I would like some iron sights to come all the way out to the muzzle. Now because I'm not running a red dot because I wouldn't be able to do backup irons, that's always my fear with red dots is that when the battery goes out, then you have nothing, right? But this, obviously it illuminates, so it's great for low light settings. But if your battery runs out, you have standard crosshairs, so you can still aim and fire this thing, right? And as long as I'm putting on an optic like that, I might as well get one to four magnification so that if I wanted to shoot at longer ranges, um, like I know that there's some other videos on YouTube, people shooting it out to 100, 125 yards, um, and this thing has proven to be pretty accurate even out to those distances. So I would definitely want some magnification for that. Anything that has drop zones for like 223 or 308 or whatever, is not gonna be applicable to nine millimeter. So you're basically not paying for features that you don't need, okay? It's just a basic crosshair and it illuminates and it's got magnification. The one by magnification is a true one by, so you can shoot both eyes open. That's what I've been doing this whole time. And if you want more information on this, it is in my video on best budget AR optics. So definitely check out that video next. So what I'm doing here, is what I'm gonna call the last of my reliability tests. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm loading up the ETS magazine. Again, I expected this 30 round ETS magazine to give me some issues and it didn't with the ammo that was in it. So I'm gonna try alternating loads. So you can see all the different types of bullets that I have loaded up in here. And I've got this thing loaded max capacity. You can see how compressed that magazine spring is. All right, mixed bag ammo, CTS magazine loaded to max. Here we go. Ah, oh, there's a jam. All right, let's quit malfunction. All right. So we had one hang up, and I don't really know if it was a failure to eject the Winchester or a failure to feed the Hornady hollow point, but the rest of the mag seemed to fare well. And it's probably worth mentioning, I mean, nowadays, with how accurate CNC machining is. There really shouldn't be break-in periods on guns, but if there is a break-in period on this gun, we're definitely still in it. I think now I'm gonna do a little bit more fun shooting. I don't like wasting ammo just for the sake of reliability tests, so I'm going to do some more fun and practical training while I'm out here, and maybe even do some range testing. All right, we are now at the 200 round count, using various types of ammo, various types of magazines. Seems to be proving to be pretty reliable. So I think this gun's gonna be a real threat to the AR-9. This thing is pretty feature rich for the price, okay? MSRP is $7.99, street price is $6.49. At least that's what they're selling them for at j g You know, you really can't build a quality AR-9 for $6.49. Now, of course, that doesn't include the folding arm brace, okay? That was an extra 159 bucks. So once you add in an arm brace on this and on the AR-9, you're looking at about the same price, okay? The only difference is this thing has been super reliable in every AR-9 that I've ever shot. That's not been the case. It's been a matter of finding the right mags and the right ammunition. But as far as like different ammunition and stuff, this thing has been perfectly reliable. Like I said, except for when I was using those ETS mags. I'm definitely getting better with this thing. As you can see, 
I'm not exactly on the most level terrain. Walking back and forth between this ravine, all this trash around here. I'm still getting shots on target, despite focusing on my peripheral vision here. If you like this gun, you better like loading magazines, because loading up these four magazines is just taking forever. And you go through it so fast. I do want to thank Jane G Sales for lending me this firearm for review. It's the only one they have, so, and I'm keeping it. <laughs> so I'm not promoting the sale of this firearm from JNG Sales because if you go there, they don't have any more because they had their only one and they gave it to me. That's why I love JNG Sales. They take real good care of me. But it is worth mentioning that they are open for business during this crisis. And they were the only people in town that had nine millimeter ammo for sale. They have some boxes that they are selling over the counter only. So if you're a local, um, you might want to stop in there and see if they have any. I know all the other shops in town are sold out. Nope, not quite there yet. <laughs> I also want to mention this SB Tactical 1913 folding brace. Um, they didn't have those at J&G, so I actually ended up ordering one online from Joe Bob Outfitters. And I ordered it Monday morning when I picked this thing up, and it was at my house on Wednesday, which is crazy. So when every other online distributor is saying that they're 10 days out from shipping your orders, uh, they shipped mine the same day. So thank you, J&G. Thank you, Joe Bob Outfitters. Uh, no links in the description because they sell guns and I don't want to be accused of promoting the sale of a gun here on YouTube. All right, so I've backed it up. Most of that shooting was done in the 15 to 20 yard range. I've backed it up to 50 yards. I've adjusted a little bit of magnification into my scope and I'm just gonna see what I can do offhand at 50 yards, see if I can still ring some steel. Um, one thing that I love about this gun is the trigger is actually really nice. Um, I don't have a trigger gauge. I would guess that mine's probably around a four pound pull. I know they're shipping kind of anywhere between like four to six pound pull. Mine definitely feels lighter. It feels plenty crisp and it's got a really positive reset. Very crisp. Positive reset. Very crisp, crisp clean break there. I love it. And that's partially because one of my first guns I ever owned was a Ruger 1022, and they're actually using 1022 components in these triggers. So you can buy your favorite 1022 match grade trigger components, slap it in this thing. All right, let's see if we can't ring some steel at 50 yards. Well, I have this thing sighted in at 20 yards and at 50 yards, it seems still pretty dead on. I mean, I'm not doing any holdover. I'm just aiming center target and I'm hitting all this stuff just fine. Yeah, even that four inch gong, 50 yards, doesn't seem to be a problem. I kind of want to go back a little bit further now and see what I can do. All right, so we're about 75 yards out now and I'm going to be shooting through some brush and I don't know what my holdovers are on this thing yet, so I don't know if I'll be able to ring any steel from out here. So we'll just see how I can do offhand at 75 yards, see if I can still ring some of the steel. All right, got that one. I think that was a miss. I think I'm missing. I don't know where I'm heading now. That was a hit. Can't hit six inch plate. There we go. Okay, so. I need to hold over about four inches maybe at this. Let's see if I can hit the four inch plate. There it is. All right. I did eventually hit them all. There it is. There we 
we go. Man, once I figured out that holdover, I think I got it. Let's let's go back a little bit more, see how I can do offhand, maybe at 100 yards. All right, so we're back about 100 yards now. It's difficult to tell with all the brush in the way, a precise measurement, but I'm gonna do my best. Actually here, I can take a knee. We'll see if I can hit anything from a kneeling position. Got it, first try. Hard to hit that six inch plate. Got one more mag. There it is. Okay, we're holding over about six inches maybe at this spot. Come on, I can hit that four inch plate from here. There it is. There it is. All right, oh, one more failure. Zoom in on this. Look at this. This, that's a very interesting looking jam there. Now it's interesting, the only failures that I've had so far have been with the ETS magazines. So I'm guessing it's a magazine issue more than a Ruger issue. Let's go ahead and keep shooting. See if I can't ring that four inch gong a few more times. Oh, another stovepipe. Interesting. It's not locking back on the last rim, as it should be. So I'm gonna call that a magazine failure. Slave labor is making me do- Can I say, did you already? <laughs> You know, we put over 500 rounds through this thing. We had three malfunctions exclusively with the ETS magazine. So I'm gonna chalk that up to the magazines, not the gun. And it's been pretty reliable. And really that's what I've come to expect from Ruger. I mean, they overbuild their stuff. I mean, that's the reason why this thing is so heavy and it's got really smooth action. I mean, it's manufactured to really tight tolerances. So you really gotta get that in there. And then it just, it's rock solid. I believe that the takedown feature for a barrel this size, pretty pointless. I honestly would prefer, I think it just be one piece, but I don't shoot suppressed very much. So I think that's what they had in mind with this thing is, you know, putting a suppressor on it and then it would make, you know, collapsing this thing down into a smaller package really easy, right? So, but for me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have the takedown feature since I'm not shooting suppressed. I do like this SB Tactical folding brace. I know that TFB TV had issues with theirs collapsing while they were shooting it. I didn't have that issue, so um, I don't know if it's because I just haven't broken it enough, but it's been plenty solid, super lightweight. Um, I love that if you keep the charging handle over on this side, then you can still shoot the firearm with the stock collapsed. <laughs> If you do that, be prepared to get hit in the face with some brass. <laughs> the takedown forend does have M-lock cuts in it, which is pretty nice. So you can put on your favorite M-lock accessories or just uh, a piece of Picatinny rail right there. So I've got my Olight Balder Pro on there. So I've got a nice daylight bright laser, 1200 lumen flashlight that I can activate without adjusting my shooting grip, which is pretty nice. Honestly, I gotta say Ruger delivered. I mean, we asked them to and they did it. Maybe you know of a better platform for a pistol caliber pistol. Um, I don't think that an AR-9 is better than this. I've heard good things about a CZ Scorpion. Um, what this thing has over the Scorpion is the ability to take Glock mags, okay? Scorpion mags are not cheap, they're not plentiful, but Glock mags are certainly cheap and plentiful. It's pretty heavy, I think it comes in around six or seven pounds. And with this really lightweight brace, um, it definitely has a lot of forward weight to it which I think probably helps control the recoil. I mean, being a large, heavy nine millimeter, there's not gonna be a whole lot of recoil anyway. So fast follow-up shots are pretty easy. If you wanna learn more about some of the accessories I have on here, this Vortex Optic, I have a video, like I said, on the best budget AR optics, as well as the Balder Pro laser flashlight. So definitely check those out. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.